Hello, this is Dr. Mark Rosen, and this lecture is Critical Care Ultrasound Vignettes, Vignette number three. Once again, the purpose of these vignettes is to illustrate how ultrasonography can be useful for making clinical decisions and diagnoses in the intensive care unit and the emergency department. Let's look at case number three. Case number three you are called to the bed of a 64-year-old on the vent who is now short of breath. You are told by the resident that his x-ray reveals a pneumothorax, which is presumably from the ventilator. Here's the x-ray. If we look at the right, the arrows illustrate what is interpreted as a pneumothorax rather large one, certainly consistent with his shortness of breath. So let's take a look at his physical exam. Again, ultrasonography should never replace the physical exam. It should enhance it. Blood pressure is 120 over 72. He's tachycardic at 118 and tachypnic with a respiratory rate of 24. He's afebrile and his pulse oximeter is at 90%. His general appearance is that of a moderately dyspneic patient on a male. His heart reveals a regular rate and rhythm without murmurs. His lung shows trace crackles bilaterally with shallow breaths. Abdomen is benign and is soft, non-tender with normal bowel sounds. His neck has no visible jugular venous distension. His extremities reveals trace edema. Now let's look at ultrasonography as it relates to pneumothorax. If the patient has no pneumothorax, there is what's known as lung sliding. So over here on this loop, we can see that there's subcutaneous tissue, the interface of the parietal and visceral pleura, and this line here does have some shimmering, indicating movement, and it has these lines coming down, which indicates the presence of what's known as B-lines, or cometal artifacts, all which shows no pneumothorax. This shimmering of this interface has been described as ants marching along, or merely motion that is visible. Now, if a patient has a pneumothorax and we look at this line, there's no movement whatsoever. Again, over here, no movement of this line whatsoever. This is a classic visceral parietal interface for a pneumothorax. Same here, no movement. If we change from B mode, or brightness mode, to M mode, or motion mode, there is what's been nicknamed sky ocean beach. The light blue line reveals what is called sky, which is the subcutaneous tissue that is above the parietal and visceral pleural interface. The ocean, which is with the darker blue line, is the interface itself, and the brown arrow indicates what has been called beach, the sandy appearance. This is what's seen if a patient has no pneumothorax. Now over here we have M mode in a loop. And what it reveals is that there is no beach over here. There's no sandiness, if you will. And this has been known as a barcode. And this barcode is typical of someone with a pneumothorax. So then, what did this patient's lung look like? Well, the slide that was shown previously was actually his lung. There is good lung sliding. and there are these cometal artifacts coming down. And this was seen in all interspaces. spaces. 
on M mode, this in fact was his M mode. And clearly, he has a beach appearance in the sky ocean beach. This is not consistent with the pneumothorax. So what's really going on with this patient? Here's his x-ray. Let's take a closer look. Remember, the pneumothorax is seen on the right. If we expand the x-ray a bit and look closer with magnification, we can see that that line, which appeared to be a pneumothorax, is in fact not a pneumothorax. And going out to the periphery, the yellow lines are revealing lung markings. Let's go back and look at the original x-ray. There clearly seems to be a line in the right. But this is with magnification. Radiology did read the x-ray correctly. Unfortunately, the x-ray was read by radiology approximately half an hour after it was read by the resident. Now, it would be conceivable that the radiology department would not call to confirm that there was an x-ray showing no pneumothorax and a chest tube might have been placed. Radiology read this as an artifact and thought it was a skin fold. However, this was an emaciated cachectic patient. There was no extra skin to fold. Once the sheet under him was removed, the chest x-ray was completely normal. There was no pneumothorax. Also, no chest tube was placed. Why was this patient so short of breath and tachypnic? This was discussed with, after the first ultrasound was obtained, which showed no pneumothorax and showed a chest tube was not necessary. Further ultrasonography was utilized. The MDs were unsure of this patient's fluid status. The patient did not speak English, and due to a language barrier and the patient's confusion, the patient would not open his mouth for examination. Since the mucous membranes were not easily able to be examined, we could turn to the urine output. However, renal insufficiency made the urine output unreliable because the patient had a baseline oliguria. The patient was somewhat edematous, but he also had a low albumin. So how does one interpret that? There was also no jugular venous distension. But once again, jugular venous distension is only seen about in about 20% of patients in the intensive care unit. His blood pressure was normal and was without orthostasis. Cardiac ultrasound revealed a hyperdynamic heart. Now let's take a look at this parasternal long view. Here's the left atrium, the mitral valve being pulled by the chordae tendinae into the papillary muscle. Blood flowing from the left atrium through the valve into the left ventricle. And here's the walls of the ventricle, septum over here. Blood flows out the aorta, past the aortic valve over here. And this is right ventricle up here. If we look at the space that is the cavity over here in the left ventricle, we can see that there's essentially total obliteration as the heart is beating. This is a hyperdynamic heart. Hyperdynamic hearts are commonly seen in patients with dehydration. By turning the probe 90 degrees, we're able to see the inferior vena cava. And the inferior vena cava will change its dimensions with inspiration and expiration. Here, we can see at point A, calipers were used, and the diameter of the inferior vena cava was quite small at 0.76 centimeters. 
there was near collapse or coaptation of the inferior vena cava at point B, where it was a mere 0.25 centimeters. Significant dehydration or severe he- dehydration typically has an inferior vena cava diameter of 1.5 centimeters or less. Clearly, the inferior vena cava seems to indicate this patient is behind in his fluids. Additionally, if there is a change of 50% or greater in the diameter with inspiration or expiration, that go alongs, goes along with intravascular depletion. So the IVC diameter, in conjunction with the hyperdynamic heart, seems to go along with the diagnosis of dehydration. This patient was given 1.5 liters of saline and his symptoms resolved. The bottom line of this case, case number three, is first of all, never rush your readings of x-rays or other tests. A clear look at this x-ray would have revealed that in fact this was not a pneumothorax. But in the heat of the moment, it's very easy to suspect something, look at the x-ray, and not have confirmation from the radiology department or from others on your team. And then, of course, ultrasonography is quite sensitive and specific for a pneumothorax and is significantly more sensitive and specific than conventional x-rays. And in this case, we could add even when the x-rays are interpreted uh, incorrectly or correctly. And remember, ultrasonography should not be used to replace a good physical exam. It can be used to enhance it. This patient was dehydrated, but it was just difficult to tell clinically. So thank you. And please see the next vignette for additional learning about critical care ultrasonography.